came to Falmouth in 1987 and I came to study uh, boat design at the Falmouth Marine School. And we were encouraged to design boats made out of glass fiber. And yet I always used to find myself down the town library going through the old books on primitive sea craft or ancient history. And I filled my sketchbooks with pictures of boats made of rods and reeds and laths. I spent years traveling around the country and Europe building boats and refitting boats. And I always thought, I really want to build a coracle or a curragh, and then it just suddenly happened. Every time I used to go to the seaside, I would spend my some time walking along, peering over the end, edge of harbours, this other world of, with, of boats that I thought I would never be able to participate in, and um, look longingly at them. What I love about the curragh is the fact that, in theory, you can make it from anything, it's just it can be recycled from bits and pieces that you find, you can make it from old curtains and it, it really makes this kind of um, activity that I've associated with the rich, elite and privileged, it, it kind of opens the world of the sea up to anybody, you, you know, anybody with a bit of initiative and, and enthusiasm and a few bits of, a few twigs and a bit of cloth can, can have a go and actually get out there on the water. Sunday morning, in an old hazel coppice uh, near the beach. Perfect time to cut some hazel rods, which will be the framework for uh, this year's curragh. Uh, you've got a, it's uh, now early January, and the sap's well down from the trees, so that the rods which have been cut, these ones down here, um, they'll have a certain amount of longevity. If you cut uh, the hazel in the spring, the sap's rising, the bark wants to peel off because the sap, sap coming up the rods. Um, birds are nesting, so this is the absolutely the right time to get out and do some coppicing. These all rods will go to my workshop. They'll dry for uh, six, eight weeks maybe, and then they'll be ready to put into the frame, framework the gunnel frame for a, uh, a curragh which will be about 17 foot long. Day five brings sewing and tacking and then painting the canvas with black, black varnish, black gunk. Hence the overalls <laughs> in preparation for the gunk. <laughs> Janet, you've got a guitar on you. Ooh. I don't know, you get the impression you're a curric builder. Rory put it on the top of his car, which is just a, like a Fiesta type size thing, like a small um, estate, and it actually fitted perfectly. It didn't look out of place. In fact, nobody gave it a second look as we were driving through the town. We're so used to such strange cars going past. Sideways, that's easier for them. Okay, oh, wow. have, you have you rode before? Probably not. Um, Bye. Bye. <laughs> Where's that compass? And it was actually as I was falling asleep, I don't know where it came from, but it just popped into my head. Skelf. And a wee skelf is what? Um, it's a wood splinter under your skin. It sounds quick, it sounds fast and light. But also it's like to do a skin under the skin and I quite like because it's a skin boat. It's just kind of cheeky and I don't know, I like the word. Mm -hmm. 